Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alexios. Hope you guys are having a great day. And today, we got a different video. But before we get into that, I want to thank you guys for reaching 60 subscribers. You know, I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm just very happy with how the channel's been growing. Everybody's been so kind, leaving great comments, and I just want to say thank you. Make sure to check out my last video if you haven't already, reviewing the Yeezy 350 V2 Carbons. Not these real. <laughs> but now, let's get into what I consider to be the top five sneakers for the fall. So an honorable mention uh, for me goes to the Off-White Rubber Dunk, uh, or for that matter, any dunk. Uh, it has been the year of the dunk comeback. I, you know, I was never the most into dunks, uh, when I was in middle school, I had like a f not fake, but you know how Nike and Adidas have like fake versions of like their own shoes. I had one of those for the dunk, so it's pretty nostalgic for me in that way. But overall, dunks are, are just great shoes, and this one especially stands out. So that's the honorable mention. So at number five for me, we got the Ultra Boost. So right here I've got the Parlay version that released earlier this year based off of the initial concept. I think it came out in 2016, I'm not sure. But ever since I saw that concept, I wanted it to release. And when these came out, I needed them. I need it! I love what they're about, the story behind it, and how it uses the ocean plastic materials. But that's besides the point. The Ultra Boost in general is just one of the most comfortable shoes you can get. So if you don't have a pair, that's something you definitely will need. And you know, the fall winter, your feet can get a bit cold because of the prime knit, but you just wear thick socks to counter that. So this is my number five choice. In Ultra Boosts, I go a half size up for having a slightly wider foot. And in this one particular, it's a bit tighter than a normal Ultra Boost but you should be good. Number four goes to the Nike Sakai LD Waffle. This I have in the black nylon colorway. Uh, I wanted the initial like first black colorway so bad, but the resale is crazy. So I got these instead and apparently the pairs in Europe, uh, the suede on them is more of a dark green and I got mine from Goat. And sure enough, it's a dark green, but I actually really like how it looks. But this shoe in general, it's just, it's very cool. If you like something that looks classic, but has an edge to it, literally, <laughs> then this is the shoe for you. It just, it looks great. This one's certainly more durable than the first LD Waffles. And yeah, I went true size on these and I have a slightly wide foot. They're a bit tight, but they have gotten more comfortable the more I've worn them. At number three, we have my favorite Yeezy silhouette, I think, the Yeezy 500. This shoe, it's fucking weird, but I love it for that. Um, you've got the suede on here, which just, you know, once you wear them in, it just looks really good all worn. And it's insanely comfortable despite not having boost. Goes with so many outfits for the fall, with that chunky, cozy vibe. And yeah, oh, I can't say enough good things about this shoe. But for this, I did go a half size up. And I think if you have a slimmer foot, you could go true to size. But as a wide footer, I went half size up because I was worried because the toe box is a bit low. And yeah, I'm happy I did that. These fit great. At number two, we have got the New Balance 992. If you saw my review of this shoe, then you know how much I love it. I've been wearing it non-stop. The color itself is great for the fall, but any colorway of the shoe is awesome. And the comfort on these, amazing. The quality, amazing. The only thing I would say is I'm not sure how this suede will hold up over time, given I haven't had it that long, but I feel like you'll be good given how great everything else has been with this. For these, I went true to size with a slightly wide foot, but if you have a regular or slimmer foot, definitely go down half size, because these do run big. But if you're like me, then you can be good with your true to size for some extra space. And lastly, my number one sneaker for the fall, I have to take it off my feet. 
here we have it, the Air Jordan 1. Where do I begin? So fun fact, my first Air Jordan 1 I bought used off of someone from school, but the first like one I got for retail was actually won the raffle at Kith for the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1, but that one is, that one I wear selectively, but these, I, I absolutely love these. Blue's my favorite color, they're durable, you can wear them anywhere, they look great with anything. Any colorway of the Air Jordan 1 is just great, and it's a classic shoe that'll always look good, especially with pants in the fall. Quality uh, differs depending on which one you get. On the Obsidians here, the quality was awesome, but on some silhouettes it just isn't as good. So be wary of which Jordan you get. Air Jordan 1, so I have always gotten the half size up in 11, and in my Travis Scott ones, those fit as if they're true to size, but in these, I do feel like there's a bit of extra room. So I think it really does depend on the colorway and the materials used. To be safe, I would say true to size, and you can always just loosen it up. But if you want extra room, half size up isn't gonna kill you. But there. That's all I got. Those were my top five sneakers for the fall. Let me know what you guys think are your top five sneakers for the fall and whether you agree, disagree. I know someone's going to say those rubber dunks should not be an honorable mention, but I was talking about dunks in general, okay? Make sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike if you hate me, my content, or my voice, I don't know. But that's it, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. It's been Alexios. Love yourself. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!